Welcome to the Lockdown Live podcast. All of our podcasts are available on our YouTube channel. And while you're there, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. My name is Jamie Flynn, and you can find me on Twitter at jam underscore fly. My guest today won the League of Ireland First Division title three separate times between 2012 and 2016. In 2017, he decided he was sick of the Irish weather and moved to New Zealand Premiership Club, Southern United. Since then, he has scored 29 goals and 47 appearances for the club and recently won the Players Player of the Year award. Welcome to the podcast, Garvin Coughlin. How's it going, Jamie? You all right? Good, good. You're, you're in New Zealand right now, Garvin. How's, uh, how's lockdown over there? Yeah, it's not bad. Um, it's been, obviously, it's like, like everywhere, I think it's been, it's been tough. Um, I think kind of luckily for, for New Zealand, um, yeah, you're kind of off the edge of the world. So uh, it's, it was quite easy, I think, for the government to kind of get, get a control on the, on the coronavirus outbreak. And they closed the borders very, very quickly, uh, stop people getting in and getting out. Um, and yeah, obviously being kind of a three and a half hour flight from anywhere um, is, yeah, a, a huge help. Um, I think I read we had, didn't have any new cases yesterday, which was the first time since it started. Um, and I think we've only got about 250 to 300 active cases now. So lots of recoveries and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's well under control here. But, um, yeah, the prime minister said yesterday we're not quite we're not quite there. Um, and we just need to yeah keep control and stuff like that. And um, yeah. the weather has been absolutely un- unreal. Um, we're heading into May now. Um, which is the start of kind of yeah coming into the winter season here, um, and yeah it's been beautiful. It was twenty twenty three degrees yesterday. Um, I turned my camera around, but it's actually cloudy today, so you've kind of okay. got me on a bad day. But uh, yeah, no, the weather's been really really good for for long long periods, which has yeah. been which has made it a lot easier. You know, um, I know in Ireland there's been the two kilometer zone uh, that you're not really meant to leave. Yeah. Um, where I'm based, I'm, like the the beach is like five hundred meters away, and uh, there's a forest and a park and a football pitch less than less than 200 meters away. So, yeah, I'm kind of lucky with that. And that, yeah, there's definitely opportunities to get out of the house and, and go for a run or go for a, you know, a different a different bit of scenery because I'm sure mm-hmm. people who are in city centers and stuff like that, it can be tough when you can't quite get out of your house and then there's not much to do, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they've uh, they they prematurely ended the football season there. Is that right? Yeah, they did. Um, kind of happened fairly fast to be honest um we obviously were keeping a close eye I, me especially keeping a close eye on home and seeing what's happening in ireland because obviously family and friends are there so mm. um we and there's obviously there's a few irish lads at our our club so we were obviously all kind of keeping an eye on that and we had seen what happened with the prem and and lots of the leagues across europe and stuff like that and we were thinking you know, it could it could happen here like it could they could potentially just cancel it so um yeah we just we played um I think we played at home um, and yeah, we came in on the Tuesday um, and then the, the government had gone to level two here, which was basically um, like big kind of a warning, basically something's happening. There's, there's, there's going to be issues here. So yeah. Um, yeah, we had a meeting kind of, we didn't even meet. We literally just had a text kind of conversation in the football group and just said, you know, we were traveling to Auckland that weekend, which was obviously you know, big city, big airport, lots of, lots of travelers, yeah. lots of tourists up there. So, um, yeah, when we, we kind of had a little chat between ourselves and basically some of the players were not comfortable with, with flying up there and stuff. And, and, um, yeah, so we kind of made a decision as a club that we weren't going to play, um, for safety of family and that. So, um, yeah, it kind of came quickly enough Tuesday, we, we decided, and then not even by the Friday, the, the whole league was stopped and um, New Zealand football said, yeah, look, there's a couple of clubs now that aren't keen on traveling. Um, so we're just going to stop it. And they, they were, to be fair to them, they were open to restarting it. But then because we fly to all the, fly everywhere and have all stuff like that, the flights would be just null and void. You'd have to rebook further cost on all the clubs. So, um, yeah, it was just canned at 16 games. So two games left, um, which is, yeah, disappointing. Um, but at the same time, kind of, yeah, safety comes first. Yeah, so I is, could understand is, it really. What's what's the situation with the the league title? There is there a clear league winner, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. To be fair, there was a clear winner. Um, the Auckland City, who are yeah, well, personally, I'd say it's definitely the strongest team in the league. Um, very, very good 
possession based football team that just yeah they'll wear you down they keep the ball it's so hard to they just pass 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 um yeah they were they were a few points clear um but in New Zealand they have a slightly different format to the league so you become the minor champions after 18 games and then you become then it goes into like a playoff so top four one plays four and two plays three and uh, then the winner of those two semi-finals goes into a grand final and then they become the winner of the league okay so a little bit a little bit different you don't you're not an outright league winner um, yeah, just yeah. by your points so well, yeah. last year yeah last year Auckland went unbeaten so they played 18 games 17 wins and one draw and they lost in the semi-final so they they weren't league champions which is strange but yeah yeah it's just the way they do it here yeah just yeah more similar to the uh to the kind of the US system of just a kind of a playoff at the end yeah, yeah, a bit like the A League kind of do it as well. So obviously the Wellington Phoenix play in the A League, um, and they yeah they do the the same thing. So kind of okay. a mirror of that, a little bit like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll we'll definitely we'll get back to the the New Zealand football um, later on. But uh, I suppose firstly, so you're from you're from Limerick. Um, what uh, before before you got to New Zealand? What was your uh, what was your early football career like? Uh, your your first kind of introduction to football in your early life. Yeah, I suppose I'm from a family of, of two brothers, so um, and my father was always into it, so it was kind of a, a no-brainer to, to just play football. I can remember when we were younger, just having football goals in the garden and yeah, yeah. Just, just booting each other around the garden and playing football. And, you know, um, and it got to a stage then where <laughs> my father eventually got rid of the goals because his garden was getting destroyed, fences were getting broke, stuff like that, so we were kind of shunted out onto the street. Um, but yeah, no, we, I played from kind of three or four years old all the way till I think it was about, must have been about 12, 13 or 14 maybe at Munger Regional um, and played there and yeah, really enjoyed it. It was great, great little club to get started. Like I think, um, yeah, just going down on a Saturday morning, like you don't, you don't realize till you, you can't do it, how, how good that, that is, like just being able to go and play. So yeah, me and my two brothers, we've all played, all played for um, Munger Regional till we were about. 13 or 14 um, and yeah just then at kind of 13 or 14 I made played the Kennedy Cup um, and yeah kind of made the decision at about 15 I think to to go and find somewhere else to play and and in Limerick unfortunately because of the small player pool um, the only option was kind of Fairview Rangers where everyone was playing and to be honest the season before they were beating teams you know 8, 10, 12 nil which to me wasn't really something that I was overly keen on um, like that's not really going to be good for anyone's development the winner nor the loser so um, yeah I kind of had a chat with my dad and he was very keen on kind of trying to progress on to the next level so um, I'd had I'd been in the emerging talent centres uh, the one in Ennis um, which was yeah brilliant and it was really like the first kind of um, kind of uh, introduction into proper training and proper yeah. football because obviously Munger Regional Community club, great little club, but like not for talent development. Uh, it's just community club where you just play football. Um, mm. And then obviously the Kennedy Cup is the start of that and you play for the Limericks, you know, the City League and stuff like that. But it was kind of the emerging talent centre of that where you kind of realise, oh, this is proper training. You arrive, the gear is there. You do a session, physios are there, do a session, like proper tactical or technical session. And um, yeah, just really enjoyed it. So it was like, right, want to progress the, the career and yeah, the option was either Dublin or Cork and we had family, I had family in both, but um, we kind of looked at kind of a couple of options, but then decided Cork would be the best. Um, and we went down there. My father actually went down. We went down for to watch a match, a couple of matches down there one Saturday, the season before I went down and decided on Ballon Colleague. Um, kind of my father's from, family's kind of from, is from Cork. So we just said Ballon Colleague would be a perfect one. Um, they'd actually made the National Cup final that year we went down to see them um, and that was as good a reason as any to, to kind of go so decided to go to Ballon Colleague went for two years to Ballon Colleague travelling up and down and to be fair really really enjoyed it um, mm. good, like great group of kids like really really enjoyed it and yeah learned lots learned lots um, obviously big fish in a small pond in Limerick and yeah. then you you go to a team where you don't know anyone you know you don't you literally haven't a clue who anyone is so you have to integrate and meet new kids um, and yeah, try and try and play football with kids. You don't even like the first couple of games, you don't even know their names and stuff like that. So um, yeah, really enjoyed that. 
was tough. I'm sure it was tough for my dad, who was driving me up and down kind of yeah. an hour and a half every so, yeah, Saturday yeah, morning. Yeah, you're 14, 15, obviously, in school in Limerick, and you're so yeah. traveling up and down to Cork kind of multiple times a week. Yeah, no, to be fair, um, the, the the coach there is actually his his own son was on the team, and the, the, the son's older brother um, played in goal for Cork. So Mark McNulty, you might know the name, was mm-hmm. the keeper for for Cork City. So he was the coach, and he was happy enough that I was doing the Emerging Talent Centre, that that was one training session a week. And then I was able to manage my own training sessions during the week where, you know, you just did your, you know, did a little bit and kept it going. Um, and I was a fit enough kid anyway, so to kicking out in the street and stuff like that was probably enough. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just went up and down on a Saturday, Saturday morning. I remember leaving early, early in the morning. And to be fair to my dad, it was all him because he'd often be, you know, dragging me out of bed saying, come on, we're going, you know, you're leaving at seven o'clock in the morning for, you know, a half nine match or whatever. So, um, yeah, it was all down, lots of it down to him. Yeah. That I, yeah, that it was successful and that it was really, really good. So, mm. um, yeah. So, yeah, at, at that age, obviously, you're, um, you're, you're taking football quite seriously already at that age, if you're willing to go to, to that much effort. Um, what kind of, uh, what kind of ambitions did you have for the game or were you thinking, were you thinking further ahead? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, my mother was obviously supportive, but, was very keen on continuing school and making sure that the focus was still in school and, you know, you weren't getting carried away or whatever. So, um, yeah, obviously everyone, lots of kids in Ireland's ambition is to, when they play football is they want to play in the Prem, they want to play for Liverpool, they want to play for Man United. Yeah. Um, and I was no different. I, I love to support Liverpool, would love the chance to even, you know, look at Liverpool's training ground as a part of a trial or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that was the dream really. Um, and then you got kind of got to 16. Um, and then when you realize maybe that you're not going to make the level of going to England, 16, 17, um, like I played with Limerick, then I got kind of a, an introduction into like under 19s at Limerick. And that was a really good opportunity as well. So yeah, I took it with both hands and just decided that that would be really, really good for development and plus closer to home. Um, although some, sometimes I think it'd probably be quicker to get to, to Cork than I would to get across the city to Corbley so um, we used to train in Sh- Shanquil out in Corbley so yeah it was a, a bit of a trek on a on a you know Tuesday and Thursday or Monday and Wednesday across the city in rush hour traffic and I couldn't drive so my dad had to bring me and stuff like that so um, yeah I went into an under 19 setup um, which was like yeah really really good it was actually I think it was a championship first I played one season of a championship at 16 and then played in under 19 and then was into the kind of the first team around yeah 16 17 yeah um but yeah like another another step kind of towards kind of where i wanted to be and what i wanted to do was like play football you know if you could play football for your career that was and that was your livelihood then that's you know that was obviously that was my dream yeah yeah, yeah. So. um yeah, so it just uh, at your age there was no uh, the under 15 and the under 17 league of ireland wasn't um um, hadn't been created at that point. Um, did, did either of your brothers are, are they involved? Were they involved with the the fifteens or seventeens league of Ireland? No. Um, yeah. Steve, o, my youngest brother Stephen, he was uh, unfortunately for him, he was like really coming through. He was starting to get like like he was a small smaller kid, but he's he's like, technically very good. I I think he's technically brilliant. Like yeah. Um, and he just he's the youngest, and unfortunately for him, he was in a trial match, I'd have to ask him, but it was uh, like in a representative Munster level or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, and he went to score, to go and score, and the keeper came out and broke his ankle and the base of his shin, which obviously, yeah, cost him a lot, a lot of time, um, a really, really bad injury, um, which was unfortunate for him. So he kind of got put back a couple of years, and he's only really coming back into an, like really enjoying football kind of, you know, now. Um, and then Ronan, who's the middle brother, he's yeah now kind of 23. He yeah he didn't make Kendi Cup, um, and then two years later signed for Huddersfield Town. Yeah, just in, yeah, in just the shows, shows so, what can happen. Yeah, so you know lots of you know, uh, Ron, and I, we always knew Ron was really really like brilliant, like really good at football, like really good attitude. Like used to get up at you know 14, 15, used to be going to the gym in the morning, like mad stuff for you know for a 14 to 15 year old to be doing, but for him, it was normal. That was what he wanted to do, you know? Um, and yeah, he was lucky enough, well, lucky or 
made his own luck, whatever way you want to look at it. But yeah, yeah he went to Huddersfield at 16, 17. And yeah, he had kind of four and five years over there, which is, yeah, that got assigned a pro contract at Huddersfield. And yeah, so he kind of went the opposite route of, of well, the way I went, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I said, yeah. There's, there's, there's a number of, um, there's, a, there's a number of options for for young players. Um, you know, different, different routes to go down. Um, the, I think the the League of Ireland is definitely a very legitimate, uh, legitimate route to go down. And now with the kind of the 15s and 17s set up, um, there's even another, you know, another avenue for kind of kids to go down. You know, young fellas to to go down to try and make their career in the game. Um, yeah. So you were yeah, so you were involved with the the nineteen setup in Limerick. Um, when um, so yeah, wh- when did you first uh, become part of the the first team at Limerick? Uh, uh, I must have signed. I think I signed for the I signed for Limerick as like yeah, sixteen year old. Um, probably two weeks after the Pat O'Sullivan era started. So he had just bought the club. Scully was in. Um, and that was kind of the beginning. I only I only known the Limerick under Pat O'Sullivan, um, and uh, my first introduction to proper management, a proper coach like manager was Pat Scully, which okay. I don't know if you've ever met him, but yeah, a very imposing, strong mm. man who and definitely had his ways. And he was and to be fair, I've often talked about like um like my time at Limerick when I was young and. Didn't really know, to be honest. I can tell you now. Didn't have a clue what was going on, really. I was there to play football. I thought it was like, yeah, you know, I'm after, I'm playing for this team. Like, I, you know, you don't really realize what it means at the time. Um, but yeah, Pat was like one of the, I, I feel he knew football well um, and he knew what way to win. So he knew how to, to get the, try to get the best out of players and he yeah. had a way. And to be fair to him, like, it, yeah, he won the first division. Um, I suppose at this, I suppose you say at the second attempt, but yeah, won it comfortably at the second attempt and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that was my first introduction. Um, and lots of players like Shane Clark was there and John Tierney and stuff like that um, who were there at Limerick at the time. And I would have come in as, yeah, literally 16, 17-year-old kid. Um, yeah, as a, my first real experience with, with senior football. Um, but, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Like, an, mm. kind of an eye-opener for, for, for a kid like who, who, you know, was only playing football with the hopes and dreams of going to England, but yeah, now you're coming into real football. This is what you need to do. Like this is what needs to happen. So, um, but yeah, brilliant, definitely unbelievable experience as a 16, 17 year old to get into that. Like, not the most professional setup, but definitely more professional than I've ever been in before. So, yeah, I suppose yeah. If if um, we we'll, we'll go into more detail, but uh, if you were to looking back um at your your time in League of Ireland, um. What what would be kind of a, a fairly quick summary of of your feelings um, on on your kind of overall League of Ireland career? Um, to be to be fair, um, yeah, I suppose you say it now, um, and it's probably easy to say as a twenty seven year old who's yeah had, I think I've had eight eight seasons in the in the League of Ireland. Um, yeah, I like to, to be honest. I'd have, I'd have wished I'd have known more or appreciated more where I was at the time. So, for example, I was in a setup and I was on a on a a countrywide. Um, everyone can see you, like you're playing every week, or you know, people can see you. They're watching you. Make sure that you're doing your best and you're you're looking after your body, looking after yourself. You're you're fully um, you're fully in it. Like you're in. You, you know, yeah, you you understand crazy, what you're yeah. doing and that. Yeah, you're really going for it. You're making the most of it. Um, but as a 16, as I said, 16, 17, 18, you know, you know no better. You think yeah. life is brilliant and whatever you're doing is the right thing to do. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely loved it. Loved it. Um, met a lot of unbelievable characters, lots of great people. And I still have lots and lots of friends that, you know, touch base with all the time to say, like, that I've had a great, like, seasons with, memories with that. Yeah, I'll never, lo- I'll never lose. Um even if I'm on the far side of the world, I'll always have that. So, um, yeah, like, to be honest, I had a couple, probably three seasons at Limerick up until I was about 18 or 19. And then was never really a full on set start or say. Um, and that was for various reasons, probably um, the strength and depth of the, the club as they got pushed into the top of the first division into the Premier. Um, and was I ready? Probably not. Uh, you could have probably put me in a bit more and played me a bit more. Would I, you know, 
was their players better and more ready for it definitely um and maybe that was that was tough luck on my part um had say for example the idea of say Pat O'Sullivan not coming in would Limerick have sat in the first division for longer more than likely would I have played a bit more more than likely um but that's football and that's the way it works yeah um but yeah no I've not I've don't have a bad word to say about the League of Ireland or anyone involved in it I think it's an absolutely fantastic fantastic um league I don't think it gets enough credit from Irish people yeah um, and being having been in it and come out of it and now watching it um obviously my brother plays for Sligo um at the moment so I have a keen eye on it but like I think it's a fantastic yeah. league and it's it's up there with like there's not much um you know it's it's run by volunteers and yeah. like people behind the scenes it's all run by them and and I think that it's just brilliant that it's come so far from when I started and Le- and Limerick got to the first division or into the premier like it's a it's a hell of a different league now than it was then um mm-hmm. Limerick were getting what were we getting a thousand fifteen hundred in the in the in the in Thorn Park and that was seen as wow big crowds yeah. and now you're seeing you're seeing bowls against Shamrock Rovers and Tala Stadium is full with seven thousand people you know that's that's less than ten years you know that's that's a big yeah. change in ten years so I think if it keeps going um, and it keeps developing the way it is, yeah. And especially, like you said, with the 15s and 17s league that started up now, players can see an opportunity in Ireland as opposed to, oh, the only option is going to England. The only option is I have to sign for a club in England. I have to try and get through. If I don't get through, then I'm, I'm stuck. Like, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think the, the development of the league in the last 10 years has been brilliant. Um, and it gives hope kind of to kids who, who want to stay in school and want to finish their education first before they, they risk it all because obviously I've I've been lucky in one sense I've got a like obviously I went to UL and have a degree but my brother unfortunately never went you know dropped out of school at 16 to, to follow the stream um, and doesn't have a I'm, I'm sure know, they'd doesn't. welcome him happily into UL anyway Garvin uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to get a good word in there will I <laughs> um, but yeah that idea of oh leaving school and no education uh, yeah. against having an education and then trying to push on in your career um, you know, but yeah, it's great to see the League of Ireland um, yeah. kind of opening that opportunity for for kids. Yeah, players. yeah, I think um, like I th- I think the League of Ireland has a mixed reputation, but um, Joe, I think a lot of people would say it could be improved, but it's I definitely think it serves a very important function, and then it's it's good to hear someone who's kind of been there, done that, um, has very positive feelings on it, and uh, what you said about the volunteers is very important. I think in that any criticisms you kind of level at the league I, d- I don't think it's necessarily the club's fault or the people running the league's fault you know um you know there's not there's not a lot of money in the league so i think it's it's a lot of good football people doing the best they can and as you said now that a lot of these job you know, like young fellas have another option now Joe. You know, as you said before Joe, you know, for your yeah. for example your brother it's it's a case of you know, you take the shot at 15 or 16, take a big gamble, and if it doesn't work out, you could be in a tough position. So it's definitely good to, to have another option now for all these uh, all these young players. Yeah, 100%, definitely. definitely. Um, I, would have, I would have jumped to the chance for, uh, I think, Decky Farmer, who was my under-19s coach, who I think was like a brilliant coach, te- like a technically brilliant coach. Like, yeah. Um, if, if I had had that chance at... at 16 and 17 when I went into kind of the A championship team that Ronan had when he went into the under 19s which was almost on the same level he was four years behind me and um, it was so far forward from when I had it to when they had it they were doing you know gym sessions different you know different t- two sessions good quality technical sessions two times you know twice a week like that just stood to him then when you know he could develop and grow as a player far quicker than I could when I was just going in as a you know, you're just turning up to training and doing whatever was yeah. doing. You know, there wasn't more of a focus on development and growing. So, yeah, um, yeah that, that's the way it's going. And that's like, that's kind of, the, that was kind of the start of it when Ronan did it. Might have been, yeah, that might have been eight years ago, six or eight years ago, anyway. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, excellent to see the, the progression. I think it's something that um, I think football often kind of lacked behind um, rugby and kind of GA in some ways in this country where maybe we weren't yeah. taking that as professionally. So it's definitely... Definitely good to see it's you know the sport is catching up now a bit. Yeah. Um, just want to talk to you a bit about the 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 contracts in the league of Ireland. Um, not necessarily money or whatever, but um, 
so you, you come into, you're kind of involved in the first team from kind of 16, 17. Um, what kind of, what kind of contracts were they? Were they, you know, was it, was it pay to play? Was it part time? Was it professional? Um, for me, I remember I signed my first one. I'd say I wasn't even, must have signed. I think I signed for Limerick on, in like, I think Pat came in in June of, I must have turned 16 that January. So I was maybe 16 and a half, um, coming close to 17, say. Um, and yeah, I signed, signed the first deal. To be honest, it, I can't even, we couldn't even tell you now, like, I just must have just gone in and whatever they said was whatever was on the table, I would have gone, yeah, yeah that's fine. Like no negotiation, nothing like that. Um, yeah, I think it was basically the first one I signed was probably part time, potentially part time. I was still in school. Um, you know, I was going back to, I probably had maths on Monday morning, you know, I was playing <laughs> a match on a Friday night in front of a couple of hundred people and then going into school on Monday. So, um, yeah, it was ba- basic enough. I think I had a, just a base small salary and, and appearance money, which to me at the time was, I was like, this yeah. is brilliant. Like, this is amazing. Someone's got, someone's literally giving me money to play football. Um, yeah. which was like, yeah, excellent. Sorry, just one sec. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, um, that's my girlfriend's daughter, so she's... Okay, very well, good. We've got work and stuff to do, and she wants to do some stuff, so it'd be grand, she'd be fine. Um, what was I saying there, sorry? Um, yeah, so you're, oh, you, you were talking first, about first. on a Monday morning, you were, yeah, getting paid to play. Uh, yeah, yeah. Play, playing in front of a few Yeah, so... Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, basically, I think for when the contracts come, like, at the start, as yeah, 16, I just, I would have just signed it, um, and yeah would have been no yeah, just went and did it Um, I think as I grew kind of a little bit older say I would have every year you'd have gone in and because they're one year deals too you know you're only getting till the end of the season then you have to, you have to come back and yeah. um, almost renegotiate the next year well, yeah um, they're not even they're not 52 week contracts is that right no yeah no yeah. they were 40 yeah. possibly 40 if not a 38 or 40 maybe 42 yeah. Something along those lines, anyway. But, yeah, um, just for people who aren't aware, it's you're basically you're, oh, you're yeah. getting a contract for basically if the season runs whatever thirty eight or forty weeks, you're getting a contract for that period. And yeah, you're the 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 post the post season and before the preseason, you're not um you don't you don't have paid employment basically during that period. Yeah, and that was and to be honest, that was one of the big big reasons for me to the kind of up shit and leave was like, like, yeah. like at 20, 22 or three or whatever age I was when I finished university 24. Um, I was, yeah, I, I couldn't, couldn't really see myself while it was fine for the, the 40 weeks you know, to get, you'd get by and it was grand for what did you do for the 12, the 12 weeks that you didn't get paid for. You didn't get paid for preseason. Um, you didn't get paid over Christmas, uh, which was, yeah, which can be tough. It's fine for yeah, a young kid who didn't have anything to buy or, you know, you'd, you know, all you need it for a few points in the weekend or whatever it is. If you've got family and you've got a house and a car and, you know, kids to look after, unfortunately a forty two week contract isn't gonna isn't gonna get you anywhere. Um and yeah, a couple of issues with that is if you don't have a pro, if you're not there for fifty two weeks or you're not a permanent, the got the bank isn't gonna give you yeah two hundred grand for a mortgage because they're like, Well, all of what happens in two years' time if you don't get a contract or you know, they're not gonna do that. So um yeah, that was one of the reasons I kinda thought uh, League of Ireland has definitely many good qualities and lots of the teams now are going, you know, fifty two week contracts. Um but for me in that in that time it wasn't really where, where I wanted to be on a forty forty two week contract. So um it was kind of time to go and see what other options were out there. Mm. Um yeah, so that's kind of the way it went, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, you were saying there, so you kinda as I said, I, I think with Joe, with everyone, the Joe, the difference between kind of Joe, your late teens, early twenties, kind of as you grow up and as you get older, Joe, things change. Um, so at the time, you like uh, you were in, you were in UL, you were in college. Um, how did you kind of balance your Joe, your lifestyle and Joe training and study and all that kind of stuff during your League of Ireland career? Yeah, and luckily, um, I was in university at home, so I didn't really have. I was obviously born in Limerick, went to university in Limerick, so I didn't really have like 
much issues um, with like, I just had my family home. So yeah. thankfully I didn't have to go home to a, a student flat and, and cook a dinner or didn't have to go. And, you know, I had a, I had a luxury of having my parents at home who were cooking dinner for my younger brother. So if I just got in touch with my mother and said, here, I'm, I'm going to be home tonight, I said, uh, whatever, you, you know, my mother thankfully would give me, you know, have dinner on the table or there'd be something there for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I think in the first year, um, it's a bit of a blur, but like basically I think I was lucky enough to be playing, especially in first year um, at Whit Limerick was very, very um, semi-professional, like, you know, uh, your Mondays and your Wednesdays and, and uh, you know, it was only in the evenings and stuff like that. Mm. But I must have gone into second or third year in uni and it got a little bit more professional. Um, yeah, Limerick went to the Premier, went full time. So obviously, um, yeah, we were doing lots and lots of training. Uh, we were doing Monday mornings, uh, pitch session, Monday afternoon, gym session, Tuesday morning, pitch session, Tuesday afternoon, gym session, Wednesday off, Thursday afternoon, pitch session. And then Friday morning, a little bit lighter, followed by kind of a light gym session for a Saturday game. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, there was plenty. There's plenty of time spent there playing football. So um, yeah, I was lucky enough. I got in touch kind of with my people in college and university and stuff like that, and asked was it was there potential for me to kind of shift my um, timetable around a, a little bit that would kind of suit me a bit better than just getting the timetable that I was given originally and then trying to trying to work that um, and to be fair they were they were really open to that and they were happy um with that i think for the last my last year i was on a scholarship so that was one of the that was one of the kind of question boxes is what do you what do you want from us and this is what i said yeah. that it needs to be a bit more flexible because not all of us are training even some train during the day and things like that so um yeah if i had training and there was a lecture on fortunately the lecture got the boot but um yeah like i tried to squeeze a lot into um like wednesdays thursdays and fridays so i'd all day wednesday off i didn't train till four o'clock on thursday and friday was like short and sharp in the morning so you you had all friday evening too so i did lots of my tutorials and stuff like that um like wednesday thursday friday pick the late ones and stuff like that which was yeah which is intense because you get three days of lots of college but at least you can fit everything in yeah good yeah yeah uh, yeah what, what was your degree in uh english lit and new media Okay, okay. Um, yeah, the, there's a lot of talk now about um, kind of combining some of the third level institutions with the League of Ireland, Joe, see the model in UCD. Um, do you think that's a model that has potential to work? Yeah, I, d I definitely do. I think, I think the, the UCD model is like, if you look at just like some of the teams in the top teams, half of their players come from UCD. You know, mm -hmm. they've been graduates of UCD. Um, I'm, I play with one out here who is in UCD. Um, and he played it, you know, played every week for three years. Like, what a what an opportunity and what a what a, a start point in the League of Ireland if you can play every week at 18 years old, you know, for three seasons. Yeah. Um, you know, that's 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 an experience. That's how you get better as a player. You just play loads of games and you learn from your mistakes and you learn from the good things and the bad things. And that UCD idea is, they, unfortunately, they play without a little bit of consequence because. You can't get relegated and, you know, they'll play, play, play. But that's, that's what you need. You need to be able to play. Um, and what an opportunity possibly for Limerick now where there's a, you know, there definitely isn't room for two teams, but now that there's an open slot in Limerick, you know, there's your chance to, to, to use that model. And Limerick football has obviously been, has lots and lots of good players um, and always has. And to see with, with no club, it would be a shame. Um, and whatever's happened, with Limerick SC or yeah like that's just that that can happen but mm. you can fix it now there's an opportunity to fix it um so hopefully someone someone steps in either takes Limerick SC back or um yeah uses a different vessel to yeah push mm. football in Limerick further forward yeah. yeah yeah as I said yeah it's it's yeah definitely uncertain times with senior football in Limerick um I said whether it's Limerick FC or a different entity um Joe, we don't know, but uh, yeah, it's, it would be an awful shame if, if it goes too long without senior football, but hopefully hopefully something works out, and as I said, there's there's a few different models that could be approached, um, so hopefully hopefully Limerick finds the, the right one that works. Um, yeah. you played, uh, so you, you, played, you played with UL during this time as well, and um, you uh, 
managed to represent and captain the Irish colleges and university side. Um, mm. So you went to you went to the World University Games in Korea in 2015, which is the after the Olympics. I think it's the biggest um, multi sport um, event. Uh, what was what was your experience with that like? I didn't even know it was the biggest after the Olympics. Yeah, I'm that. pretty sure. Yeah, I think after that's the uh, day. after the Olympics. It's, it's the biggest multi sport um, <laughs> event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's one of the probably one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Outrageous. Um, I'm, like. Strangely enough, I got picked for the two, one either side of it. So the 2013 one in Kazan and the 19 one uh, as well. So unfortunately, I was only able to go to one, but one was enough. Like I had a, an incredible time. Um, unfortunately, got injured early on in the tournament, which, which ruined me out. Um, uh, kind of a, just a bad luck. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's a shame because I think you've been generally quite lucky with, with injuries. In your yeah. So, uh, I remember definitely. watching it at the time and it was definitely... Uh, even the kind of you were playing kind of a four four one one or kind of a four four two shape, and uh, yeah. it was definitely a, definitely a shame for you to to get injured. But uh, you enjoyed the job, obviously. That's you know these things happen, and it's unfortunate. But uh, yeah. how did you find the experience overall? Oh, I was in, yeah incredible. Um, just you just you're almost dropped into like a professional like you're now the famous professional person you're everybody's waiting on you everybody's like ready to like you arrive at the place people are taking bags they're escorting you to your rooms they're you're getting on a bus you've got like your little piece here with your name and your your country and all this you've got like security when you arrive to the pitches um you know it's unbelievable um if you live in like an olympic village type thing all your foods like you literally can go You'd be walking up one side of the cafeteria and be like European foods all the way up, go across the top, be like different types of Asian foods. And like, it was just, just incredible. It it was as if you were like a normal, like, like an an Olympic athlete or whatever. So yeah, it was, even though I was injured and and that was obviously put a dampener on it, it was still, yeah, still amazing. Still really, really good. Like, so, um, yeah, I could, I like, I'd recommend to anyone like if they got an opportunity to go, like I should have gone the first year. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'd recommend to anyone um, if they got the opportunity to go. It's an amazing, amazing experience. And so, yeah. yeah. It's a question, uh, <laughs> It's probably up there. It's probably you, up. Uh, you, you won the... Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. You're okay, you're okay. Um, <laughs> some things are more important, Gavin. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, you asked me about the last cupcake. I think that's more important. <laughs> definitely, that's definitely yeah. more important. I I agree with her totally there. Yeah, yeah. You won. Uh, you won the first division uh, league title uh, three times um, in 2012 and 2016 with Limerick, and uh, 2013 was at Lone, um, which was also a, a league cup final as well, where you finished runners up in 2016. Um, do you have, do you have a favourite season or a favourite win? Um, out of those kind of highlights from your League of Ireland career? Yeah, I think obviously the, the first one that happened was kind of, I didn't really play that much. I may have only played 15 games last as a sub. I was young, 2013, yeah. um, like 19, 20 years old. Um, hadn't quite broken in. Um, and then, so it, that was brilliant. And in like, you know, this is amazing. You're, you're going to the Premier and, you know, you've won the league. Well done. Um, and then kind of the next season it was oh well we don't actually we, we want you to develop more so we're going to put you back into the first division um, at the time I was like oh no I don't want to do that like I I want to try and fight for my place in the team I want to you know play in Premier Division football mm. um, and yeah I think upon kind of a bit of a not a realisation but definitely a chat with family my parents and what, what did I want to do would have would sitting on the bench in the Premier or playing in the first division, what would be better for me? You know, you're a Premier Division player, and unfortunately, there's it happens a little bit in the league world now. I play for Shamrock Rovers, like or I play for, you know, if you don't like, if you're sitting on the bench, you're not yeah. really playing for Shamrock Rovers. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just decided that it was probably better off that this loan deal, um, chat loan, which came about through just one day, basically, Gaffer came and said, "Yeah, look, we're going to send you out in loan." It was almost like a no real choice type thing I was happy enough um, uh, yeah so just w- had Roddy Roddy Collins which is yeah an experience in itself and uh, an unbelievable experience at it alone um, and yeah really I mean really really enjoyed it played like 30 odd games played with a couple of like proper experienced pros um, 
like Philly Gorman, um, Aidan Collins, like Skinner, Paul Skinner, like proper like pros, senior senior pros that have played the game, been around new like new football, knew how to win, and obviously Roddy as well, who who yeah, yeah. who definitely knew how to win. Anyone who knows him, well experienced in the League of Ireland, brilliant man manager, like probably one of the best I've had, um, as regards trying to get you going, motivate you, get the best out of you in, in a game. Um and and always seeing like a yeah a good side to a, even if it's a bad performance or a bad or a loss um, which we didn't have too many of that year um, he always kept it going and kept the spirit high and stuff like that and he's loved the joke so you know that that was definitely one to keep the dressing room together so um, that was probably my best one until I got to yeah back to Limerick I was playing yeah kind of back in the in the in the fold of Limerick FC and yeah in 2016 was there 17 16. Um, when I won it, that was a yeah, that was a brilliant, brilliant. That was that was my one of my favorite seasons, um, as a footballer. Um, great mix of like young and old. Um, lots of young lads coming through, like Paddy O'Connor, who's gone away now, went to Leeds, and is at Bradford now. Uh, Tony, Tony Whitehead, like, um, yeah. Then there's like Robbie, Robbie Williams, Sean Kelly, like Chrissy Mulhall, Aaron Green. Like I could keep going. There's yeah. like like some of the players there that are just you know premier players right now like playing you know playing every week like um but yeah that was one of the best um full time as well which is obviously a huge bonus um you know getting to play football all, all you know all week not just waiting for you know Tuesday Thursday or whatever it was so mm-hmm. and yeah and I think I think we went unbeaten or did we yeah I couldn't even I think it was now, yeah, but very close we lose, yeah. lose one of the games yeah so that was an incredible yeah incredible season um, and one that here, just looking back on it, like makes me kind of smile. You kind of think, and yeah. that was that was really really good. Like that was an enjoyable enjoyable season. Um, so yeah, mm. that was probably um, my favorite one. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got to uh, you got the opportunity to play against Manchester City as well in in Tolman Park with uh, with Limerick. Uh, what was that like? Yeah, I think that was yeah that was amazing. That was incredible to be honest. And I, as I said, I was. It probably, I think that was 2016 as well, was it? Uh, I'm not, been, I'm not sure. Maybe even, I think, could have been 2014, 15, even. Yeah, it was uh, uh, maybe the first year in Tolman Park, I think. Yeah, so that was like, I don't even think I realized what, what, how, how big a deal that was, like Manchester <laughs> City, but I remember being on the pitch and like dropping into kind of midfield and seeing like Ed and Jekko like just yeah. beside me. I'm going, oh my God, like this fellow's <laughs> on the TV every week. He's, international football player like you know he's incredible Milner um, Gail Clichy like you know very, all these players Julian Lescott like yeah. an experience in itself just even being on the pitch like we weren't like they beat a 4-0 we weren't even anywhere near them you know they were in first first gear strolling yeah. um, but like yeah incredible experience to, to do it in that stadium with 20,000 20, people yeah, and um, it with those players and stuff like that was just yeah, it was an unbelievable experience. And lucky for lucky that I was in a position uh, in my career that I was still with Limerick and they had an opportunity to play this game and yeah, I got on the pitch. So yeah, brilliant. Did you uh, did you not make Julian Lescott? I'll let you answer that. Possibly, <laughs> I can't really remember. Garvin <laughs> couldn't possibly say it. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll mention it for him. Um, yeah. What was uh? What do you think was the biggest thing uh, you learned in your time in the League of Ireland? Um, the biggest thing I learned, and it was probably too late, was focus uh, like focus more on your football. Like, uh, like I could if I could tell my fifteen, sixteen year old self, like, um, fo- like focus more on your football. Um, really, really get like, get your head down and, and give it a good go. Like, give your give all you have to it. Um, there was probably too many times where I just football was a hobby and I was luckily good at it. I never really, you know, over, you know, I didn't go out, didn't go out training and, and be like, right, today's the day. Now I can learn more. Like, yeah. you know, um, and then another one, listen to, listen to older players. Not that I didn't ever ignore or, but just talk to older players and get to know like what they, what they think and what their thoughts are. They've been around the game. They like, as a 27 year old now, um, if a young player asked me a question or whatever, yeah, like that's brilliant to see when a, a young kid was, wants to learn and wants to learn off you. So, and I wish I'd done it more when I was, yeah, 17 to 20, 21. But um, it's never too late to, to learn either. So, yeah, even at 27, 
I've learned a lot since I've got over here. Um, yeah, different environment and different um, different football over here. So I've learned quite a bit since I got here. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so you're yeah. So you you're kind of you're finished up college. As I said, you're on these kind of forty week a contract, forty week contracts with um, with Limerick or with that low, with different league of Ireland clubs. Um, when when did New Zealand first become a possibility for you? And were there any other options you were kind of looking at at this stage in your life? Um, in New Zealand, actually, so the reason I, so when I went to South Korea, uh, the, the coach, the head coach there was, is, came, had come over a, a year or two later to New Zealand, got an opportunity to work for New Zealand football in Auckland. Didn't quite work out. He wasn't overly, um, yeah, didn't, just didn't work out for whatever reason. Then he made his way down south and got himself a, a head coach role down here at the, at the club in, in Dunedin. So um, I played with him. I played under him in Korea. So and so had a couple others of the players. So he'd um yeah, he'd just got in touch. He actually got in touch in two thousand sixteen when I was in my final year. Um I was about to go into my final year. And yeah, it just for timing, it just didn't work out. Uh, my mother was really keen on yeah, making sure that I stayed in, in university and that I finished my degree. Um because I was in my final year, I'd come so close to you know, to leave it after three years would be silly. And um, so I just was Were you considering yeah. it? Were you considering leaving after? I was considering it. Yeah, I was considering it. I think in hindsight, it would have been a stupid, a stupid decision um, because without my degree over here, it would have been difficult to pick up the next set of visa, the next visa over here. Um, okay. So I'm glad I went back and did it. Um, and then, yeah, I just told Paul that, look, if in 12 months time, if the offer, offer is still there and the opportunity that, to go over is still there. Um, get in touch and and we'll see what can what can happen or whatever so um, yeah I was I was keen on doing something different um, my friends had been talking about going potentially going to Canada um, and I would have jumped at the chance to go to Canada or to go somewhere new um, and then prob- um, as a result of that probably go into the the world as a as a worker I suppose and you know playing football on the side if I could earn a bit of money that'd be great but I was ready to go and you know, join the real world, um, if you, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, then yeah, twelve months time, Paul came back to me and said, yeah, he was really keen, um, and they hadn't had the best season, um, they'd they'd only won three games and stuff like that, but that never crossed my mind, um, to be honest. Once I had seen kind of what he had off- had to offer, a job, um, you know, chance to play, they play well, they play in a our home, our actual home stadium is like a something similar to Thoman Park, twenty five, six thousand seater stadium. Wow. Um we only played three times that season in the stadium due to different reasons, but still like an incredible venue to play at. Um and yeah, look, one of the definitely one of the best decisions I've I've made, I think, is coming over here and trying something different. There's, unfortunately there's too many people like staying in Ireland just because it, it's familiar, it's easy. Um mm. you really there's so much to, so much of the world to go and see and do like so um yeah probably one of the best decisions i've made is, is taking that opportunity um it was only really a, a six month thing um he had kind of played it out to me um and we'll probably get into it later but the way the seasons work over here is very different to lots of the world yeah and um, in that they play two seasons in the one year so six months of winter six months of summer the kind of pro or senior clubs um like your pro league say um, they play for six months in the summer and then all your junior clubs like your regional United or Fairview they play in the winter so only for six months um, but yeah I kind of was going to go over for six months for the summer season and then if it didn't work out or if I didn't enjoy it or if I was homesick or whatever I'd just come home um, and nothing lost you know Yeah. Um, but yeah no I came over group of lads here were, were brilliant um, and yeah that's kind of the sense of home so an Irish coach Irish accent um, living with two other Irish lads down the road from another Irish lad playing on the team with kind of six of them. So, um, it was easy to kind of not to think you were at home, but definitely to yeah. think you weren't that far away from home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, you might have to fact check this, but I'm far, as far as I'm aware, the furthest away city from Limerick is Dunedin. And if you start, if you go any further, you start to come back. So I think 20,000 yeah. kilometers away. So literally the far That's side me. of the world. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so yeah. as far as you can get away, yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> um, you you might explain how the um, your the 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 role of a footballer is there. So it's you've other duties other than just playing and training. Is that right? Yeah. So the the lads that I live with, I live with two lads at, at this moment in time um, in Dunedin. Um, they both work their development football development officers, and then another lad who lives up the road with his partner is also a football development officer. So they were lucky and they got into, when they came over to Southern, that they got those roles, full-time roles, like development roles, that they were, you know, that's, that was their path. That's what yeah. they wanted to is do. That, is that with the club itself or is it with... So the, the, yeah, so the... Because uh, the, the New Zealand as a whole, two islands, the, is split into seven federations. So each federation is under New Zealand football and reports kind of to New Zealand football. So the one that we're in is Football South, which is the south half of the South Island, so from kind of halfway up the island down, um, and yeah, they that federation is own or owns kind of the Southern United, the football club. Um, there's only two of them like that, so the one that we're in and the other half of the South Island is mainland, and they own the Canterbury Dragons. So they kind of they sort of work as kind of. Um, a financer for the club and yeah. but then the, the players and stuff like that you are used to do football in schools development of football across the region different things um, and then some players just come in and work or come in and yeah play football um, or in university down here there's a huge university in Dunedin so kind of 25,000 students and stuff like that so lots of young students coming in every year um, but yeah the, the, the seasons work kind of strangely enough it took me a while to get my head around it um, kind of from, um, I suppose, the season started last year in October um, and finished was due to finish in March. So that's like your summer season, which is backwards for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the summer, yeah, the summer season. So that is like your Southern United, your Auckland Cities, um, stuff like that, the big clubs. And then from, yeah, March and April to, yeah, kind of September, um, August, September, the winter clubs play. So they are the, it's very, very complicated, but they play in like a, a season as well, but they just play locally. So yeah. there's a winter league in Dunedin, Christchurch, um, like Wellington, Auckland, stuff yeah. like that. Um, and there's, yeah. And they're, they're like, be similar enough um, to like your Limerick District League and your Cork District League or whatever, your DDSL, things like that. So yeah, they Are you playing both? Are you playing both seasons? So you you can I I did last year um the so the league in in Dunedin is like it's it's all right league but I just decided to play up in Christchurch okay um so my my partner lives here in Christchurch so I'm actually here in lockdown in Christchurch at the moment and um, so I played up here last year and yeah I've been looking to move I'm be moving here in June kind of full time permanently so um. Yeah, who knows what that's going to bring? Um, I'll probably I'll I'll be playing probably with that team again in the winter league this season once it starts up again. Um, but yeah, um, that's just the way they do it. They hmm. they had an opportunity recently, New Zealand football, to kind of change it and move it towards a a bit like the League of Ireland, where the League of Ireland runs through the summer but extends out, and then the it would potentially be like you could play for Pike Rovers for six months and then play for Limerick FC for six yeah. months. And just jump over and back, um, and that's basically lots of the time what happens here. That lots of the pro clubs or the bigger clubs have like a feeder club, which is a winter club yeah. that their players play for in the winter, and then they play for in the summer as well. Um, yeah, yeah. The league here, the pro league, has a, a restriction on foreigners. So when I first arrived, it was seven, and it's now dropped down to six last year and five this season. It was down to five, which obviously brings its own issues. You've only got five people from that aren't a c- uh, citizen of New Zealand so uh, obviously I don't count I'm obviously Irish that there was six Irish a Norwegian a Finland a fellow from Finland like okay that in itself is a, is a difficult thing to understand that you're not actually you're not trying to fight for your place in the team you're only trying to fight for one of the foreigner spots if you understand yeah. what I'm saying yeah interesting dynamic yeah yeah so then Kiwis Kiwi players unfortunately can can often demand more um, because if you're a good Kiwi, yeah. people want you to play for their team because it's, it's, it's difficult to find the, the best Kiwis um, mm. 
you know, it's difficult to find them. So, um, yeah, that's just... Yeah, not too dissimilar from the, you know, that you're only allowed the, in La Liga, <laughs> they have a certain amount of South American or non-EU players or, you know, there's yeah. uh, um, situations like that in other football teams. So I suppose it's just a, another thing that's uh, another, another consideration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it was hard to get our head around at the start um, because, yeah, some of us were getting left out and going, like, I could be playing here, but this rule is stopping me from playing, which is, yeah, it's kind of difficult to get your head around. You don't understand, you know, you're definitely you thinking in your head, oh, I'm definitely good enough to be starting here, mm. but, but I can't get in the squad, like, you know. And then <clears throat> if, you're, if you're not one of the five, you can't be, there's not a sixth person allowed on the bench, it's five in the squad. Yeah. So that's kind of, yeah, just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, yeah, New Zealand football had a bit of an opportunity to, they had a review and, and a chance to change it from the way it was two separate seasons to kind of overlapping them, kind of, yeah. you know, like the League of Ireland. Um, and yeah, they just didn't quite, they just didn't quite do it. They, they just changed it a little bit, um, but didn't quite change it fully, if you know what I mean. They didn't make it an overlapping yeah. season. It just overlaps a little bit, um, okay. which is a little, it was a little bit disappointing because we, we felt there was an opportunity to change it and they didn't really do it. So, but that's, that's, they're the controllers of football in the country, so that's kind of their yeah, yeah. Stuff, stuff if, to yeah. them. If if they overlapped it, it would have just given more opportunity for game time for for some. Yeah, if, if they overlapped, um, yeah, unfortunately, um, some of the winter clubs have lots and lots of members. So the big Auckland clubs and Wellington clubs have lots and lots of members, therefore lots and lots of income. Whereas some of the some of the franchise clubs, which would be like Southern and Auckland and stuff don't have um, any kids playing underneath the name. So they don't get income from player um, numbers, which means that some of the winter clubs can then give money or reimburse a lot higher than yeah, you know, yeah. some of the summer clubs can. So you get to the end of the season and all of a sudden you see players leaving. You know, they're supposed to be playing at a higher level, but they're leaving to play winter football or they're leaving to go to Australia to play winter football because the, the clubs have more money, you know. Um, mm. Which, which I felt was an opportunity on New Zealand football's part to change that and allow yeah. or to stop that from happening and you can only play on one. But, yeah, they didn't quite do it. So. Not otherwise, yeah. yeah. Hopefully it might happen in, in a couple of years, but, you, yeah, you never know. Mm. You never know. Uh, how's, the, how's the standard and uh, style of play in New Zealand versus uh, the League of Ireland? It's very, very different. It's very different. Uh, especially, <clears throat> maybe League of Ireland is probably getting towards it, more towards it now. Um, but from chatting to my brother and obviously playing in it for a number of years you can tell that League of Ireland can be quite direct can be quite keeper doesn't play out bang hit, the, hit, a, hit a big man up front or you know play off second balls or whatever um, and yeah I think like Limerick used to do a lot of that with like you know we used to have Dennis B in, um up front where you just hit him play off him and then that was probably the yeah the, the, the textbook of how to win the League of Ireland First Division for years because I won it twice in a, in a team like that so um, yeah that was probably it so over here there's none of that they play out all over the place they literally risk everything uh, lots of the players are possession lots of the teams are possession based lots of very very good technical players like where um, yeah they'll just keep it and play and play sometimes against Auckland City Eastern Suburbs um, Team Wellington who are the top three this year they might keep the ball for a couple of minutes. Like you're just, you're just shadowing. You're just trying to make sure they don't break you down. Um, which is, which is a different type of game. Um, less physical, less like you can't really go around flying into tackles because they're short and sharp. So it's difficult to get the ball. Yeah. You just give away frees and things like that. Um, and then kind of the referees here are, um, have that, they're, they're designed for that then. So when big tackles go in, it's, well, that's not allowed. Whereas in the League of Ireland, you might get things that would be let slide. That yeah, might be over here. That could be a, nearly. Could, yeah, it could be a yellow card here. Like, whereas it's just a good tackle in Ireland type thing. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the main difference is the possession based. Lots of South Americans um, and Spanish and like tech, notoriously technically good yeah. um, footballing countries have come over here and yeah, done quite well. And yeah, and to be fair, we've obviously we brought a bit of the physicality for no other reason than just being involved in the League of Ireland. Mm. Um, like I wouldn't be over an overly physical player, but over here I'd be considered robust enough centre forward, like, you know, throwing myself around and tackling and 
you know, just your usual stuff. But over here, they don't really do that. You know, they don't have players that are strikers that are pulling at defenders or, you know, fouling people or, you know, things like that. So just a little bit different, just the way yeah. they do it, yeah. Do you prefer it? I, uh, yeah, to be honest, I do. Um, uh, it gives you, me as a player as well, I like to kind of drop in and get on the ball a bit. And yeah, the, the, the style of play over here allows you to, you know, if you're good enough technically to keep the ball as a team, players, teams will allow you. Whereas sometimes in League of Ireland, it's like, who's the fittest and get after the football? Like if, you, if there's an opportunity to get after it, press high. Whereas here, they'll drop off, they'll let you play, they'll try and say, right, you come on and break us down. You try and get through us. Which, if you're good enough, brilliant. If you're not, that's, that's a great game plan. Like we, we kind of set up a lot of the time. Wouldn't say we were the, one of the worst teams in the league, but for like, we wouldn't, we definitely weren't the best. So when the best team came to play us, we just said, right, we'll set up two banks of four. You come and break us down, which, in the, you know, it's a very difficult thing to do. Um, if you're good at it, if you're good shape and stuff like that, it's very difficult to break down kind of two banks of four. So um, we, we, we ended up getting a lot of good kind of results off Auckland City, who are the best team since I've been here, um, and Team Wellington a couple of times. Um, so, yeah, like a couple of draws and stuff where in previous years, Southern would have been beaten, you know, hands down, you know, a couple of goals, three or four and else. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just about knowing kind of what way to play and then, yeah, see if you can, if you can stick to the plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there any big any big differences in say footballing culture there that you've noticed? Um, you know, kind of the dress the dressing room banter or the kind of the crack from that point of view. Yeah, um, I think um, I suppose in Ireland everyone watches football. It's not it's not even like oh I watch loads of football. You just watch football. Um, whereas here you're twelve hours, you know, time difference or thirteen at the moment. Um, like you can't watch the Premier League like because it's on at six in the morning, or you can't watch you know the Champions League is on at seven in the mo- or the, sorry the Prem's on in the middle of the night three o'clock in the morning, um the Champions League's on at seven in the morning. You know you can't just flick on the TV and watch football because it's just not on. The only thing they do have is the A League, um which is like on and they and to be fair they cover every single game five games every weekend of the A League which is on Sky Sports every weekend, but. So that, that, that kind of knowledge that you get from just watching football, even though you might know you have the knowledge, you just understand football and yeah. stuff like that. I think that's a little bit lacking over here. Um, Interesting, yeah. And it's not, it's, not, it's, not because, it's not because of any other reason other than they just don't watch enough football. Like you just don't see it. You just don't understand the game as well as people who watch it kind of all the time. Um, and then kind of what was happened there is the banter in the dressing room. We, I arrived over like, and I wouldn't have been overly like like a banter thing or tough on anyone banter wise but like remember the gaffer pulling me and saying look just take it easy on the kiwis like because <laughs> what you think is a joke and you're taking the piss out of them they're like hold on a sec this fella's attacking me now like he's he doesn't like me like whereas it'll just be like like what are them what are them boots like they're the worst thing you know get them off you're not going out training them that's yeah. only even a crack to one of us but to the to the young kiwi or the kiwi lad he's like uh, my God, I can't, I can't go train now. My head's gone. I, like, so, um, yeah, the banter's different. There's obviously some people in all dressing rooms that what, love the banter and there's some people that just will keep away from it. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of in our dressing room, lots of the foreigners or the Irish lads tend to be kind of the, not the ringleaders, but the, the leaders of hmm. anything that's happening. If we're going for a few drinks or if we're going out for a bit of food after training or if we're yeah kind of going to the beach on a saturday or if you're going for a coffee on a saturday morning and um, it's it's led a lot by kind of yeah the, the foreigners in the group and then you'll have a few senior kiwis that'll come along but lots of the younger kiwis kind of yeah stick to themselves a good bit yeah yeah um yeah a couple of things there um you were saying just the the, the fact they don't watch as much football uh that's quite quite interesting that you say that uh, i think it's probably something we kind of take for granted that's joe a lot of a lot of people who aren't even particularly into football could be watching, you know, two or three full matches a week and highlights and all that. Um, yeah, even it's something something like uh, FIFA, say, play the Joe you know, the computer game FIFA. Is that um, yeah. would that be as popular in New Zealand? Oh, uh, uh, I suppose it's not as popular as yeah. home. Or like all of my friends back home would play it, would have played it at some point, and 
you know, you'd play FIFA online in the evenings and stuff like that. Yeah. I FIFA here in New Zealand. I've only played it like a handful of times with with the fellow I live with. Um, but yeah, like there's not much. I don't. I don't. I couldn't say really, but I can't imagine there's much of a demand for like FIFA. It wouldn't be like top of the list of games that people would buy over yeah. the Kiwis would buy over here. I wouldn't say, but there's obviously there's going to be. There's still interest in it. Um, yeah. You you just need an interest in football. If you don't have an interest in football, then you're not really going to buy FIFA. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, I'm sure there probably is. I couldn't I couldn't say, but I'd I'd reckon it'd be lower, definitely lower than Ireland anyway. Yeah, just just yeah, it's another small thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, things like that, as you said, we're just so so immersed in kind of uh, footballing culture here that um, and obviously New Zealand is a very big rugby place as well, so it's um makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the the natural inclination to football uh, wouldn't be quite quite as big there. Um, yeah. What? How's the how's the lifestyle there? Kind of outside the football. Uh, do you enjoy it? Ah, to be honest, Sam, it's uh, it's it's one of the best features of New Zealand. Um, like the weather during the summer. I lived like in Dunedin for the last three years down south. It's the small southern city in the country, and um, it's on the coast. I literally lived. For one of the years, well, basically for two of the years, I lived like 50 meters from the water, like from the beach. Um, cafes, beach, sunny during the summer. Um, like, I don't, I don't know where you'd get that in in Ireland. Um, like, you're talking like 20, 20 odd degrees during the summer. Um, and I think it's it's kind of hard to explain right now over over a phone call unless um, I could physically show you the heat. But it's very different to Ireland. Um, when the sun's out in Ireland and there's a cold breeze or a, a little bit of wind, it, it, it can be cold. The heat here off the sun, there's no, there's a, there's no ozone layer or it's very, very, it's very much damaged. So you can feel the, the, the heat mm. uh, from the sun just bur- like burns, kind of burns you. You can feel it like burning your skin. Um, until my brothers got over here, parents, it, you could try and explain what, I, what that's like. It's, 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 it's very difficult because there, everyone's like, oh, the sun's hot. Everyone knows the sun's hot, but this is different. This is hot. This is so you can stand in the shade and it's cool and it's fine. Go out into the sun and the sun is just, yeah, yeah it's just it's very very warm. And I've obviously I've, I'm here in Christchurch now, and as I was saying about the sun, it's 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 even warmer up here. So Christchurch is on the same level as kind of the south of France. So um, that's kind of the weather that you're looking at. Lots of good sunny days. Um, like winter mornings, always have the sun out. Won't, won't be roasting hot, but the sun will be out. Like, um, yeah. and yeah, kind of that. They're very much an outdoorsy um, group of people, the New Zealanders. Um, I just bought a mountain bike during the week, so I've been out mountain biking, been surfing, yeah, playing golf, um, obviously football, um, just down by the beach, um, things like that. That's kind of what New Zealand's all about: is they just get out and about in the countryside. And obviously, it's a very, very beautiful place. So, like going for a walk you're literally looking around and going wow this is incredible just in a normal in a normal place like in Dunedin it's like a bowl and it's just like high hills around the city and like it's just yeah it's just incredible um Christchurch is just on the the edge of um kind of the southern Alps they're called like massive massive mountain range white snow capped basically all year round and it's just you know incredible skiing snowboarding um and things like that um, lots of little lake villages too so like kind of uh, getaways so Queenstown probably have, may have heard of it it's like mm. what the most famous one um, and incre- like I mean outrageous unbelievable you can do almost anything bungee jump jump out of a plane um, yeah I've heard, I've heard it's a very good place for that kind of stuff yeah honestly one of the best places I've ever been very much commercialised like there to sell to the tourist but <laughs> still absolutely amazing like incredible one of the best places like i've been as a as a tourist there it was, would have been queenstown it's just it's just different it's different it's different class like it's so good hmm. uh anything you miss about limerick uh, probably family, <laughs> fam, family and friends if i could transport all my family and friends out here i'd, I'd do it in, in a heartbeat um but yeah no like i kind of miss the it's funny, like the culture, I don't really know if I can explain that, but the culture of just like, I'm not, I wouldn't have been a big like drinker or anything like that, but just going for a pint on a Sunday to watch a football match or to go meet someone for a pint. I haven't seen you in a while. You want to go for a pint? Like, or, mm. um, they don't do that here really. 
they don't really have a big like drinking culture. Lots the drink is is expensive here, and um, you might you'd be buying the pint for ten, eleven, twelve dollars, which is expensive enough. Um, but yeah, like there's not much of a culture to to go out and have a have a just have a few pints. Like it's you go out and have a few pints and you, you're a hundred quid down. Like you know you're you have to spend a hundred quid in, in in no time. So yeah, um, the more is is it more yeah. going for coffees or that kind of stuff, or is there anything? Yeah, it's, it's, in that kind of gap. Mm, coffee is huge coffee culture here like incredible coffee and um, some of the like nicest coffee like i've ever had has just been you just go down to a local cafe like a just a uh, like a home cafe like type thing where it's a just a small business coffee is incredible like beautiful coffee um, and yeah it's very much a um, coffee and cafe kind of culture out for lunch type thing and um, as opposed to going for pints in the evening like I wouldn't have gone for lunch with anyone too often back in Ireland. Like, oh, do you want to go for lunch? Mm. Yeah, you might go for a little, like a chicken roll. Like, <laughs> here it's like, out, get a coffee and a and a little snack. You know, you might get a, like something small, a little wrap or a sandwich for, you know, six or eight dollars and a coffee. You know, for a fiver, and then that'll be your your points in the evening. You know, instead of your points in the evening. So that's probably a little bit of the, yeah, you don't really have that. But other than that, like, obviously the biggest thing is family and friends. But other than that, I wouldn't, I don't miss too much. No. Mm. Uh, you see yourself you, so you see yourself in New Zealand for the foreseeable future you're saying you're going to move to Christchurch soon and yeah um, yeah I've, I've been here three years now I'm on a I'm on a essential skills visa now so I've got another till December 21 um, here so and then my partner she's Kiwi so I'm likely to look to go through her um, for residency and once I have residency then um, you can kind of come and go as you like no mm. no restrictions you'll have a stamp on the passport you can just walk in almost as a kiwi um so yeah i'd like to get that um would that, affect, would that affect the footballing um Un- side of things? unfortunately not okay. <clears throat> yeah so what we kind of said because because we've been here for three i've been three years and the, the other lads have been there for four and um, often what happens like i was saying i was looking to do was come in for six months and leave lots of the clubs will do that bring in good players for six months pay them for six months and then they'll leave at the end of the season but i feel that if now you've become a resident so now you're giving more to the country you're paying tax you're developing football in the region like we do and hmm. um, i think you should be given a bit of leniency um, and yeah. towards that because citizenship is very difficult to attain you need to marry a kiwi or be there for eight years so by the time you're there for eight years, your, your career is over. Um, so, yeah. And to become a citizen, you have to, obviously, because it's the Commonwealth, you have to kind of swear to the Queen, which for lots of the Irish people is a bit of a difficult one. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, that might be, uh, we kind of sent that forward to New Zealand football. They didn't really um, take it on board or didn't like overly use it. So, um but yeah, once you get residency, that would be great. Like that means you can come and go. You could, yeah, leave Ireland and go, or leave New Zealand and go to Ireland for a year, back for a year. You know, even though you keep your home over here, you just come back for a little short while. You know, do something different. Um, and then obviously with residency here, you have residency in Australia too. So, um, oh, okay, okay, you, so yeah, you can go over and back to Australia with no problem too as well. So, um, yeah, ideally get that in the next twelve months, um, and then yeah get sorted once once you've residency you can buy a house and you can you know do things like that um so yeah that that's where i am that's where i'll be kind of for the yeah the foreseeable future anyway okay good to hear um okay uh last couple of questions so for you garvin um yeah. ronaldo or messi 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 okay uh most expensive night out my most expensive night out oh uh, potentially at the end of the first division season there uh, where we went on meeting that was probably a big one I think we had a a, a night turned into probably th- three or four days of up drinking down out for the night out you know you're drinking for three or four days yeah. nightclub like bottles of vodka stupid st- stupid stuff but yeah probably any stories you can share from that uh, that three or four days uh, a number of nights uh Strangely enough, so Chrissy Mulhall, I'll give you one. Chrissy Mulhall lived in, um, he lived in Port Leash. And a few of the lads lived in Dublin. So what we did was one of the nights, one of the Friday or Saturday, I think it was a Friday night, we went up, had a night out as a team in Dublin on the Friday. Came, got onto the train or the bus, I can't even remember. Or did we rent a bus, something like that. 
and uh, drove to Port Leash, <laughs> went into this, <laughs> honestly, this tiniest pub ever. Chrissy knew the barman. Chrissy was like the owner. Like, Chrissy was just going in behind the bar, getting drinks for everyone, not about, like, yeah. as if it was just <laughs> normal. On the main street of Port Leash as well. So, like, we're, I remember myself and Paul O'Connor sitting in a window frame with no glass in it, just legs out the window, drinking pint bottles. And, like, the world is going by on a Saturday, like, um, music player and just proper, like, getting absolutely drunk. You're probably only 12 or one o'clock in the day. <laughs> getting then onto a bus, onto the bus with a train. I can't even remember what it was. Down to Limerick for a night out in Limerick. Um, and just, yeah, going. You're, you know, you've been drinking for almost two days. Um, and then, yeah, out in a night out into probably, I can't even remember Angel Lane or <laughs> Icon. I can barely remember the names of the nightclubs. But uh, yeah, into there and then up the next day for more points the next day. And then people making their way back to Dublin or wherever they're coming back or going back to home. like so. Yeah, that was probably a yeah an expensive enough weekend. I can't, I couldn't tell you what happened over the days because I was probably drunk for about three of them. So, mm. but yeah, no re- no regrets, I'm sure. Absolutely not. No. Okay. Uh, final question, so Gavin, what's your what's your go to lockdown meal? My go to oh, I'll, I'll tell you, we've had I've been having kind of. Um, we've been trying myself and my partner have been trying to change it up every night if we can. Um, so obviously there's quite a, a bit of like Japanese and Asian food over here, just close proximity to Asia. So, um, I had a kind of a Viet or a Japanese soup last night, mushroom soup, like now a different, not a thick soup, like a, a, like yeah, a broth yeah, yeah. with noodles and like different veg in it. It was absolutely outrageous. Um, had a last couple of days, my mom's been sending me over stuff kind of like, um, that, I don't know if you've ever heard, I don't eat meat, so I just eat like. I wouldn't eat like no meat or none of that. So, um, lots of vegetables, lots of like pastas and rice and stuff like that. So my mother sent me over this kind of spaghetti kind of dish. And honestly, it was absolutely incredible. It was like, you make kind of a tomato kind of base, lots of veg, almond milk, boil it off, make a kind of a, kind of a thick, kind of a, kind of a, not a thick soup, but like a, mix in between not water but not thick in between and then add your spaghetti into it and it just the spaghetti soaks up like the pasta it's just i had it we had it the other night and it was absolutely incredible like so um yeah trying to try new things i don't know what my go-to one would be um something along those lines maybe my (laughs) go-to drink my go-to drink uh, in um lockdown has been margaritas just getting the blender tequila ice and just throwing it all together we've been frequenting them in uh in limerick as well uh it's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so yeah um excellent uh thanks very much garvin uh thank you for, yeah. for coming on uh where can where can people follow you twitter i suppose or yeah twitter instagram i think i'm probably the only garvin coughlin in the world so if you find yeah. a different one let me know but yeah, yeah i'm sure you'll find me on twitter and instagram yeah at garvin coughlin i'll uh yeah, yeah i'll put a link in the description um yeah. Thank you for everyone uh, for staying with us. You can uh, follow me on Twitter at jam underscore fly. And uh, when you're on the YouTube channel, please do subscribe. It does help grow the channel. Uh, Garvin, thank you very much. Uh, All the best in New Zealand and enjoy uh, lockdown. Thank you very much, you too. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Be good.